actually when i was a pg uh, when my professor said uh, we'll we'll read osteomyelitis something which which relates to infection of the bone is that what is there infection is infection anyhow the treatment is antibiotic simple that was the opinion what is there to read in it and more so even if you read how much will it take hardly 5 to 10 minutes but when i started reading osteomyelitis we could finish it off only after 7 days there was so much in it <coughs> as we have gone going on digging various books as well as journals more specifically jaos journal of american association of orthopedic surgeons we finished off only <laughs> in 7 days so it's not a simple thing right as we go deep into it you'll understand uh, bone infection is just like a malignancy as you treat a malignant bone tumor treat infection in the bone or a joint as a malignant tumor so you should be very much cautious to detect it very early and treat it appropriately so that you don't end up in life long complications i'll just show you some pictures of complications of bone and joint infections right so here in this talk we will learn about two things one is osteomyelitis itis again one part you all know right something suggestive of inflammation of bone as well as bone marrow and septic arthritis arthritis is inflammation of a joint caused by some organisms right microbes it's called septic arthritis now let us go into this osteomyelitis means bone osteon means bone myelo means marrow and inflammation of bone along with bone marrow this is to define a clinical state in which the bone is infected with microorganisms right and septic arthritis is a, is a inflammatory joint disease caused by microbes again okay let us go into my osteomyelitis proper so first let us classify what are the types of osteomyelitis you can see in orthopedics right depending on the temporal this is called temporal classification depending on the time duration right if the patient comes very early with some symptoms and uh, they last less than 3 weeks okay the symptoms suggestive of osteomyelitis are there for less than 3 weeks you call it as acute osteomyelitis if the symptoms of osteomyelitis last for more than 3 weeks but less than 3 months it is called as subacute osteomyelitis if the symptoms last more than 3 months you call it as chronic osteomyelitis then what are those symptoms why did you call it as osteomyelitis we'll come back right uh, we'll go to that issue in the next slides coming slides that is one part of classification second is what are all the organisms that are causing this osteomyelitis has a important role for us to treat hence for that matter we classify into specific type that is tuberculosis for your purpose anything that is you when you call specific you call it as tuberculosis right the second is non specific non specific all the other organisms which are described in your anant narayan microbiology right from staphylococcus ending in fungus including fungus all of them come in non specific the but non specific type of osteomyelitis is more common than specific right specific for your purpose tuberculosis that is tubercular osteomyelitis that is what are all the organisms that are causing has been used to classify into one one and two types next is the third type is acute hematogenous osteomyelitis secondary or contiguous spread osteomyelitis or post operative osteomyelitis this is one method of classifying osteomyelitis depending on how you are getting the infection into the bone that is acute hematogenous that is through blood route the microorganisms have gone into the bone that is acute hematogenous osteomyelitis secondary contiguous osteomyelitis that means there is some infection in the skin and surrounding structures of the bone and it has direct spread into the bone and now you your bone is suffering with inflammatory disorder because of those infective organisms hence it is secondary contiguous spread second is post operative patient might have come to you you have opened or you have not opened but fixed it with a nail plate or external fixture whatever it is and these are the devices which are foreign bodies if you have not sterilized them properly or while you are operating you are not followed some sterile precautions hence you end up in a scenario where the bone is infected that is called as post operative osteomyelitis this is the classification of a simple to classify osteomyelitis is like this right now the most important thing which we need to learn is acute hematogenous osteomyelitis how does it come 
usually you see this condition in children boys are more affected than girls because of the injury patterns that you see more in boys right not that girls are not affected compared to girls boys are more affected and usually there will be a history of trivial trauma or a significant injury right usually in all these cases you can find this if you ask a patient it may be relevant to this osteomyelitis or may be irrelevant also but that history of trauma will most often be there and most of these osteomyelitis are caused by staphylococcus aureus i think in third or fourth class of mine i asked you one question why staphylococcus aureus is the most commonest organism to cause osteomyelitis and we never had an answer or a discussion on it why let us deal with it okay now staphylococcus for all practical purposes you forgot something in your exam what is the cause for this osteomyelitis what is the causative organism if you, even if you forget any other organism also don't try to forget at least this thing one thing staph aureus staph aureus staph aureus if you can remember one thing in orthopedics with, with respect to infection please remember this only one thing staph aureus that's it <coughs> there are other organisms also suppose h influenza it is usually common in children okay well, i'll come to that also and pseudomonas usually common in people who take they are drug abusers okay and staph epidermidis it's more common in people uh, in post operative infections especially when there is an implant in situ right what is the source of infection acute hematogenous osteomyelitis the source of infection is blood blood is carrying the organisms to the bone from where did this blood get these organisms that means there should be some source of infection somewhere so usually the source of infection in children is at the umbilical cord okay in infants it is in the umbilical cord in children usually either it is in the upper respiratory tract or the lower respiratory tract or urinary tract or even the skin these are all the sites from where these organisms large come through the blood and get lodged in the bone they multiply there they cause necrosis and hence they cause inflammation in the bone that is called as osteomyelitis so the source is either the umbilical cord boil tonsillitis upper respiratory tract skin or urinary tract right usually acute hematogenous osteomyelitis is caused by most often is caused by single organism and most often it is staph aureus 95% of the times it will be staph aureus okay <coughs> i told you in intravenous drug abusers it can be pseudomonas and in elderly patients and especially when they are complaining of osteomyelitis affecting the vertebrae spinal bones it is because of gram negative urinary pathogens and in neonates right less than 1 month of age it is group b streptococci and in sickle cell patients you should not forget this is a bit sickle cell patients you see salmonella osteomyelitis okay and staph epidermidis is more common these are all of them are bits they will they can come in your neat or bad or whatever exam you go are going to write they are going this is going to come staph or staph epidermidis is implant related or prosthesis related osteomyelitis these are all extra brucellosis is seen brucell osteomyelitis is seen in patients who take unpasteurized dairy products or even milk right now some for some people it is a habit directly to go and put their mouth underneath the buffalos <coughs> what do what do you call that sack what do you call that i am not able to get that word okay so if you do that it may be a hobby or it may be it may be looking good or even you you might be you may, you may be in, uh, taking in the milk unboiled unpasteurized then you are at risk of brucellosis be careful about it and whenever you have hiv or immunocompromised so many fungi are there which are mentioned there candida aspergillus and coccidoides blastomyces all these things they can cause osteomyelitis now let us go into patho anatomy more specifically whenever you remember of osteomyelitis remember of metaphysis metaphysis what is metaphysis so in children there is one part of the bone which is just beneath the physis what is physis the growth plate and above the physis is called as epiphysis which is the articular which contributes to the articular portion okay and then underneath it is a physis that is a growth plate underneath this is a spongy bone right it is called as metaphysis what is the peculiarity of the metaphysis why we are more dealing with this metaphysis is the the first thing that comes to your mind when i say giant cell tumor soap bubble appearance osteosarcoma sunburst appearance evening sarcoma onion peel appearance same like when it comes to osteomyelitis hair pin bends hair pin hair pin 
right hair pin bends what is what it is what are those hair pin bends you need to understand see if the, the, the blood vascularity in the metaphysis of a long bone is like this the blood vessel which is supplying is an artery goes divides into arterioles these arterioles are high pressure vessels high pressure zone and this goes and supplies and it they convert into sinusoids and these sinusoids they merge and become what venules now the conversion of the high pressure zone into low pressure zone occurs like a hair pin bend like this like the pin that the girls use on their hair right it bends like this now what is happening at that zone is it is an acutely bent area the arteriole is getting converted into a venule so that it supplies and then this collects <coughs> right what is the importance of this hair pin bend when the blood is flowing rushing there there will be a turbulence when it comes to that portion and whenever there is a turbulence there is a chance of stagnation whenever there is a chance of stagnation any bacteria that is coming over there has a propensity to stay there for some time whenever you have a propensity for something to stay there bacteria is not going to stay like you and me it is going to multiply lodgement multiplication and the tissue response all of them contribute to infection infection means all these things now once this bacteria is coming there why staph aureus is more common is because at this zone you have osteoblasts and the bone part whatever the collagen part and the osteoblastic part is there these have an extraordinary affinity to staph aureus why there is an extraordinary affinity for staph aureus because they have some anti if staph aureus has some antigen these osteoblasts as well as the collagen especially when it comes to the bone they have receptors to these antigens more specifically to staph aureus hence staph aureus is the most commonest organism for osteomyelitis and most commonest place for affection is metaphysis in acute hematogenous osteomyelitis more specifically when you come to anatomy into micro details of this the blood vessels the arterioles which are carrying blood to the metaphyseal region of the bone in the endothelium part of it you have large gaps for these blood and its constituents to leak into the sinusoids and then get absorbed now once there are gaps in the endothelium of the metaphyseal vessels these bacteria have a more propensity to get leaked and get stagnated in the area of the metaphysis multiply and cause a necrosis of the bone pus formation and that goes out and what you see as pus that is osteomyelitis right have you got that and there is a there is one thesis which says the uh, immunity of the metaphyseal zone what is immunity you have some immunological cells monocytes lymphocytes neutrophils the capability of these cells to kill these bacteria at these places is less the chemotactic factors or the speed with which these come and attack the bacteria at these places is less it's only a hypothesis okay so because of various factors metaphysis is a zone of increased propensity for what lodgement and multiplication of bacteria hence it is the zone for osteomyelitis that much if you can remember it's good don't forget girls as well as hairpin bends in metaphysis right 